The following Defending Our America episode is presented without commercial interruption by Sig Sauer. Over 150 police officers were in this scenario that we, we did. We did it pro bono for the state police at a, in a certain state. Well, the school has basically said, do whatever you want with, with our school. I want all the teachers to stay as, a, as an in-service day, so they're gonna go through the exercise. Give me five or six trained guys to, to do a shooting at this school. I'm like, we're gonna run this just like it's a hit. We're gonna give these guys a real look we're gonna have simulated explosives, we're gonna have simulated traps. And uh, I'm telling you, we killed probably 50 cops. Like they would be crushed. This is the state, state police. We were the first ones who did five a jihadist cell. Not a disgruntled kid right. who yeah. go grabs his grandpa's gun and comes. A deliberate this deal. is like, we are trip wires. We have IEDs, we're stopping people. I mean, they're doing stuff and we're we're setting up with long guns on hallways and the cops are coming through with their pistols and it's it's bad. Afterwards, we debrief everyone. We, we, we all meet in the cafeteria, there's 150 cops in there. They all got their head in their hand and they're feeling bad about what's going on. And I'm talking to them and I'm like, you guys know that this is a reality. Like, you you maybe you think we're mud sucking you and we're, and we're doing some stuff, but you know, we just, we just put this all together last night, you know? And so it, we're not doing anything outside the scope of what can really happen here. It's just that it hasn't happened yet. Prior to his going for a swim, Osama bin Laden very clearly said that soft targets should be considered by Al Qaeda. And by soft targets, he meant shopping malls, uh, you know, maybe uh, football stadiums, uh, I mean, you name it. Those are the types of, of targets that present the least uh, difficulty, right now anyway, they present the, uh, uh, the highest level of, of, of opportunity for success uh, and for them to create the most carnage and death and subsequently gather the most you know, uh, news media exposure, which is, is part of their, their goal. We see a bunch of active shooter kids. As soon as the cops show up, they shoot themselves. That's not very hard for, for someone to deal with. Now you have a trained terrorist cell with uh, rifles. They know you're coming. They've already planned uh, how you'll make entry, what you'll do. And uh, if I know that, you're done. We have not put law enforcement in a position where they are going to win. We've, we've put them in a very hard position. Um, there are ways to set them up in a much better position. There are ways to fix it. But uh, until an incident happens, we won't fix it. That's not, that's not how we work. I believe these attacks are going to start coming more and more frequently. Over the last several years, we've had several attempts. Most of them failed. We've had a couple of successes on the parts of the bad guys, including the Boston Marathon bombing. But I think we're going to see more and more soft targets, like the Marathon, where you have thousands of people gathered, totally unprotected, out in the open, and it could be catastrophic. We're unprepared for it. The soft targets in this country are still soft targets, even after all of the, the warnings that they've been given, you know, all of the uh, information that, that's come out uh, since 9-11 about the potential for these types of incidents. Uh, I have offered to give a, a terrorism briefing to different entities in this, in this area. And there's, there's no interest. They just, and we don't need it. Because in America, we've got this head in the sand attitude that all that stuff happens overseas. You know, 9-11 was an aberration, okay? Oklahoma City, well, that was one nutcase. You know, uh, people don't, in this country, don't understand that we've got uh, Islamic terrorists operating right inside this country. We've got other ter domestic terrorist organizations that are willing and able 
to conduct an attack of that nature, and uh, they've exhibited it. Picture your small town with a car bomb explosion. When's the last time that happened? Country fed somewhere USA, and a car bomb goes off. So your one officer goes and responds to that car bomb. Now there's small arms fire in the school. Holy shit, small arms fire in the school. Call the county police, the four of them that are working. Oh, except for now, they're at the mall shooting. They're at the mall shooting. We'll call the state police. You know, the three state police officers for the 200 miles. I got a friend that's a Mississippi state police officer, and he's on the tactics team. And he patrols 200 square miles by himself, and he relies on all these small towns. So now they're shooting at the mall. There's a car bomb explosion here. There's small arms fire in our schools. Who's going to respond to that? Who's going to deal with that? I'm really hoping that any citizen that has a gun in their house will respond to their school and save their children. But that's the terrorist attack that we're waiting for. And to be prepared for that, you need to be vigilant. You need to back your military, back your police, and ask for information. We'll tell you what's going on. Ask us, what's going on? What can I do to make my community more safe? What can I do to be a better American? Can we go back to JFK where people ask what can they do for their country? That's, that's where we need to be. When Americans as a whole start saying, what can we do to better this country and stop being a, a silent majority and start being vocal and saying, this is what we want as Americans. Not what politicians are telling us we want. This is what we want. And that'll get us moving forward, I think.